change is inevitable. This is a quote that I got when I started my career way back in 1990. The quote says, change is inevitable. Before this change can overtake and overwhelm us, we should be the instruments of change. There are whole lots of changes that are happening in the world. One is a plastic invasion. Imagine, where every day morning we are waking up with a plastic toothbrush in our mouth and ending the day switching off a plastic switch to put off the light. And in between the toothbrush to the, uh, the switch, we got plastic everywhere. Are we not able to find out any solution? That was one of the concerns. In fact, that was not the primary concern. My concern was the other one, wherein change is inevitable. Before this change can overtake and overwhelm us, we should be the instruments of change. And the change I was concerned about was the rapidly depleting groundwater. Everywhere, groundwater is, levels are falling down. Even in Punjab, the land of five rivers, with an alluvial aquifer system where little flows can recharge the aquifer, even their groundwater depletion is happening, and that is a serious problem. I was just wondering, my, my research work was on groundwater. And I was trying to understand why, what is happening. What is it? The first question I asked was, why is groundwater depleting? Is it because of low, uh, lower rainfalls? I mean, is it that we got less rainfall? When I started looking at the long-term trends in the rainfall, I found that it is almost constant. When, it, when I normalized the curve uh, using three-year uh, uh, you know, moving average method, it was almost parallel to the x-axis. It means there is not really any significant change in the rainfall. The change was only plus minus 10%. That should not create the kind of groundwater depletion that is happening. Then what else? Started looking at the cropping trends, and I found that rice is the culprit. It is being cultivated excessively. To begin with, to a socio-economist who is not you know, uh, concerned with agriculture, he would look at it that, yeah, farmers, they're accessing groundwater, that is fantastic. They're accessing groundwater, that means they're able to produce more. If they're producing more, they're able to sell more. If they're able to sell more, their income is going up. Their contribution to the GDP is increasing. The rural wealth creation should happen. But reality is farmers are as poor, if not poorer. Their contribution to the GDP has never been beyond 7%. I'm talking about the agriculture, not allied. And there is no rural wealth creation. So what is happening? If so much of water is being lifted and government is subsidizing the power to lift this much of groundwater and is not commensurating with the, the uh, social well-being in the rural uh, communities, what is going wrong? And the wrong is over-cultivation of rice. I say, and I'm standing here and I say, it is very ridiculous resource utilization from our side because every year millions of tons of rice is rotting in the warehouse, but still, Every year, on an average, 200,000 fresh area is getting under rice. I can't understand why. Why should so much of rice be produced? Let us talk about one million ton of rice. It costs us five billion cubic meters of water. And to lift that much of water, it requires in the excess of 20 million gigawatt hours. And we're talking about power scarcity, we're talking about water scarcity. If the, so much of rice has rotted in the warehouse, it means it has not come into the market. It means it has not been consumed. Does that not reflect in starvation deaths? No, there are no starvation deaths. That means this much of rice was not necessary to have been produced. But let us try to understand why so much of rice is being produced. What is this mad rush for cultivation of rice? Then I started looking at the overall cropping pattern, overall cropping system, and tried to look at the, the, uh, the psyche of the uh, consumers. Millets are dryland crops. They require 60 times less water compared to rice. You know, in other words, if one acre of millet is replaced by six, one acre of rice, the groundwater extraction goes up 60 times, meaning 6,000% more extraction of water happens. Now, I wanted to see why is it that millets are getting replaced with rice? Unfortunately, the millets are considered as a poor man's cereal. There is a tag. It's a poor man's cereal. The, pa the paradox is rich eat poor food, and the poor eat rich food. And the poor are in a haste to become rich, and they start eating the poor food. Okay, that is what has caused them to move away from millets onto rice. 
Even the PDS system and the two rupee kilo rise and the populist measures of uh, the politicians and everything has enhanced the uh, overconsumption of rice, overconsumption and overcultivation. Okay, so what I understood from this is that there is a market force that has made the farmers move away from dry land crops like millets to rice. If that be the case, I wanted to create a market force to reverse the farmers back to millets. Now, the challenge before me is the millet has already acquired the tag of a poor man cereal. If a poor man cereal, how do I make it a marketable product? If it's already uh, branded as a poor man cereal. Okay, something uh, you know, uh, nobody would like to take, no matter what. Okay, whatever may be your social media messages, social messages, whatever may be the social message, people are not going to take it. So what I had to do, I had to think out of the box. I wanted to create a product that has got an international appeal, and boy, what an international appeal it got. I ordered for idli sambar, and the spoon is put in it. So as he was putting the spoon, I grabbed it from his hand, I ran my thumb on it, it was greasy. I took a sniff of it, it was already smelling of sambar, it's been reused. We know plastic has got so many chemical complexes in it, phthalates, chelates, bisphenols. These cause cancer, these leach into food, they don't biodegrade, but still we're using a whole lot of plastic disposable cutlery. Why are we doing this? Answer obviously is there is no alternative. Oh well, we have an alternative now. We come up with an alternative, and that is edible cutlery. Here, there is no coating. In fact, it is entirely nutritious. You can eat up the spoon. Delicious. It is made of jowar, blended with rice and wheat, without preservatives, just like dehydrated vegetables. Our product also has a very long shelf life of more than three years. In fact, you can even have a hot soup also. You can um, stir your sugar and have your tea. You can eat it up. You don't want to eat it. You can just throw it. It decomposes within four to five days. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. But when I it, I आपने कभी खाने के चम्मच के बारे में सुना है? आपको एक सैंपल देती हूँ। आप अगर स्पून को काटेंगे, तो स्पून का फ्लेवर आएगा आप। इसमें जीरा, अजवाइन, रॉक सॉल्ट, ब्लैक पेपर मिलाते हैं और इसको बेक करते हैं। तो आप जब स्पून खाते हैं, तो सिर्फ स्पून नहीं खा रहे, आप एक जोहार रोटी खा रहे हैं।